Hello. Hello, my name is Catherine Elizabeth um, and thank you for joining. I am a hat designer, if you didn't know that already. I'm a hat designer, I have a shop in the Oxford Tower. I've been going for about 15 years. Love it, I'm obsessed with hats. Um, and this video here is to, if you're a designer or a creative, to get you inspired, to get you designing, to get you to run your own business. Because I absolutely love it, I love what I do, I love running my own business. Um, and well, I had help in the past. So this, these videos are just to give back and they're called, hi Sandy, thanks for coming on. Um, hi Zoanne. They're called Inspiring Creative Women. So these videos are for Inspiring Creative Women and we put them under the umbrella of Inspiring Creative Women. So I've got my business as Cat and Elizabeth Millinery um, and all, we also do events, which is under Millinery House Events. That's another page. Um, and now we started this Inspiring Creative Women about a year and a half ago. Um, and there's a group, so there's a Facebook group, but it's a free group and it's a private free group. So just click to join and then I can accept you and you can come in. You can meet all the other designers in there. We've got over 500, nearly five and a half, 550 people in there which is amazing and fantastic and it's a really nice community and um, that everybody gives support to each other and you can post in there what you're getting up to what you're creating get advice um, and also it's about business so putting up there sort of questions that you have about what how to make money what to do what to do with clients how to talk to them um, what to do about PR marketing uh, all these different things that we struggle with this group is there for you so go into the group when you finish this join also go to inspire and creative women website um, and on there you can get a free instagram guides so it's all about business and all helping you about business hi how are you is everything going well right so today in, we're going to be talking about designing because i'm designing my collection at the moment um a little bit behind should have got it done by now um but that's always the way isn't it so um, you i always want to make more than needed so that that i can Put some designs to the side and when you are creating i find that um sometimes you put it off because you think well i want it to be perfect obviously um and i've got the designs but i'm not sure how it's going to turn out i haven't quite figured the, everything out yet um oh, i need to do that before i start or i need to get all the fabrics in um and then you know sometimes you, you just well i do anyway sometimes put it off because you want it to be perfect and you're worried about it but you've got to start and you've got to get going because then it then starts to flow. You can put ideas away that you don't like and other ideas can come in that you even didn't even think of. But if you don't start and you don't start doing that process, then you're never gonna get there. So it's never gonna be finalized on paper. It's just always good to get the rough sketches out, but then you can't always sort of draw the 3D things that are in your head down on paper. So um, you can't always get these ideas out completely. You have to start making them um, and then you can eliminate things and put other things in. Hi, Claire. Hi, thanks for coming on. Okay, um, so looking at just, oh yeah, so sorry, no, first of all, I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna go on to that in a minute. Um, and I wanted to say, if anybody's got any questions, put them in now and I can go through later and um, read them. Because if I ask at the end, then often you don't have time, Facebook can't update it quick enough um, for us to see you know, what you've written. Sometimes I come off before I can see what you've written. So um, if you put it in now, then we'll have enough time um, and see it at the end. So Anne says, hello darling, what fashions do you follow? Fashions? Ooh, oh, I love, uh, I love Vivian Westwood, I love Alexander McQueen, so I love crazy stuff, but can't always wear crazy stuff all the time, so tone it down a bit. Um, I suppose I read all the normal magazines, the L and the Vogue, um, but I like blogs really because they're quite up to date, so finding out things on blogs and just seeing seeing what's going on, style guides, stuff like that, see what's different. So do you mean fashion designers or do you mean uh, magazines or, um, yeah, which sort, of, which sort of things? I tend to change my mind as well. One minute I'm flowery and I'm a bit girly and the next day I'm a bit more rock and black and black and gold and got that on today and last week I think I had a flowery dress on so your personalities come out in your dress obviously um, and change but what I like in my millinery is sculpture I love cities love buildings but also I'm from nature as you know that I am um, so I love the I love trees twigs anything to do with nature flowers organic forms and you see a lot of that in buildings and architecture as well also love interior design and furniture because then you see lots of organic shapes in that so um, I think it was a couple of years ago I started reading um, L interior because then 
uh, that was I think just fascinating because you can really see what they're doing in the textiles, in the um, woodwork, in the um, you know Zara Habib. She was just do doing designing shoes, designing um, you know, units to go in the houses, designing buildings. She's got a really amazing look and she takes a lot from nature and buildings. And as I live in London, as you know, but as soon as I leave London, I miss it. But when I'm in London, I miss the countryside. So I've always got a bit of both going on. More fashion designers and interiors, yeah. So fashion design is my favorite, like I say, Vivian Westwood, Alexander McQueen. Um, but they're the, the obvious ones, I suppose. Yeah, so I just have to think of some more. So I'm thinking of the, the little, the small ones. Andy's watching too, my brother. Hello. <laughs> this is what I was working on today. I um, designed the new collection, just trying to get a few pieces together, but I they're all different at the moment. And then I have to bring them all together into a collection. So I'm sewing this one and can you see this? It takes hours. So all this, it's not finished yet. So you're thinking, what is that? It's not finished yet. Might even turn it upside down. Um, we ha with the hats we have to block all of this with wood and steam and water to create the shape. So all you milliners watching you know what I'm talking about. Um, so we take ages to block it all and then stiffen it and make sure it's okay and then we have to wire it all. So we've got wire inside there, um, white wire inside there and you can colour that in and then I put all the edging on that so then create the shape um, and then I need to put things on it. So either I'm going to have some crazy feathers oh, that way shooting up through there, probably maybe some flowers because organic is really in for next season again, so nature, but it's a more of a desert nature, so it's not so flowery. But I think though that trend is so big right now that it's, it'll probably carry on a little bit. So that's okay. So, um, and also sea creatures was really in this year, so we're probably going to come in a bit more next year. How are we going to do it? Oh, I quite like that shape inside there as well that's going on in there. So we'll see what that looks like at the end. You're going to see it in a couple of weeks. Well, no, you won't. Yes, you will. If you come to my evening, so on the 19th of September, I'm going to have an evening where I'm showing the whole new collection. Um, but this is for spring, summer 19 next year, so you won't see it till later on. But hopefully in two weeks, I'm going to, or a week hopefully, but probably two, I'm going to photograph these so then I can... Um, get that, that together into a lookbook. So it's really good to have lookbooks and have uh, images for your website when you just want a white background just for the people to look at and for wholesale. Um, and then your lookbooks, which you've got your stylist ones. Excuse me, my phone's going. Um, gone a bit dark. <laughs> Oops, have I gone dark? Can you see me all right? Okay. Um, so yeah, so you want your lookbooks and everything and you want your pack shots as well. So I mentioned that before. So you want um, images that are gonna be cut out on a white background for the shopping pages and things like that. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today. When building a collection, you must. That's what I put. So what do you think? What do you think you should do? What's the must? So first of all, I start looking at trends. Um, uh, you can get trend boards, I think there's one called Trendsetters, where you can have a look up and see what's going on. If you're a bit late designing, then everything's going to be up on Pinterest anyway. So if you're doing it last minute, then you're fine. So just look up now, um, Spring Summer 19, if you haven't already designed it. Um, and then you can look at all your trends that way. Um, Google it and you can get some coming up. But the big ones, you know, they can be thousands of pounds. Some about 500 to 1,000, some are more. If you're go being going doing it really far ahead and you want to um, look at things, you know, two years or a year ahead, then you're going to be paying a lot of money for that. Actually, we're, yeah, we're six, we're nearly under a year ahead now. Um, so it's okay, but if you're going to be doing it a year ahead, then you do have to pay a lot more. But nearer the time, you can get them, and on, like I say, on Pinterest, they start coming out. So look at trends, and also get things out of your head onto paper. You need to think of your own trend. There are going to be the trends coming up, but you need to think of your own as well. So your own sort of theme, as I should say, more than trend, of what you want to put in. So you could have... Um, I keep thinking every year about putting Turkish design in, but I haven't and I will do. But last year Persian was quite in and I think next year Persian is coming in even more. So Seema says, who designed this collection, who is Persian, <laughs> so she's watching, she'll know. Um, so that's coming in next year. 
Um, so, you know, you want to pick a theme that you like. Maybe you just want to do nature. Maybe you want to do um, architecture like me. Maybe you want to just look at some uh, brit a brilliant interior designer or a brilliant fashion designer and just pick like, an element of their personality or what they're doing um, and add that in. So you're going to look at the normal trends, you're going to look at the colours that are in, and there's going to be so many different trends, you need to pick one or two, and then the colours, um, there's going to be this summer coming up, you've got neon, um, but you've also got your pinks and lots of blues coming in, and you've got yellow, which is going to be big again. Um, so are you going to go neon, are you going to go bright colours, or are you going to go slightly pastel -y? So pick that, um, pick your own trend, and then you want to amalgamate all of it together. So you need your theme. And you need a story behind it. So what can be your story? What can what can be the element that you're picking up? Maybe it's something from your past that you're bringing in, something that you can describe when you're showing your collection. Um, using Seema as an example, when she designs her jewellery, Seema Vaziri, she uh, looks at, she was looking at Persian design, but she's looking at sort of the textiles. She's just um, created a collection as well on Afghanistan. So looking at the textiles, the, the clothes that women are wearing and picking out different elements which um, associate to tribes which she then is putting back into her designs. So it may be something like this. So themes and what's your story? What colours or materials add to your story? So what materials are you going to add that, that work with your story um, and what colours? Um, and this, these things are going to keep the collection together. Um, and you want to repeat materials or style of materials and th think about if you want this to be something that's really harsh or something that's a bit more girly or do you want it to be, um, this doesn't really work with hats, but something else, you want it to be glossy or do you want it to be matte? So this piece here um, is quite, it's quite matte in real life, but it shows up quite glossy on the image, which is quite nice. Um, but most of my stuff is matte, but then I might put in things like plastics, which are shiny, giving you element, um, architectural and having them shooting through, which is quite modern, and add that in. Um, so something should run through, if you're doing hats or the collection, something should run through it to bring it all together and bring all the designs together. So colour, material, shape, um, to build a solid collection. Um, you can also have different... Um, colours so you want to maybe design one piece which you're going to make in three different colourways you can do this um, or you might just want to do one off so with my hats I always do one off so make that I'll put it in the, um, the collection take a photograph of it once that's sold it's sold um, if anybody likes that then I can modify it make it slightly different for somebody else change the colour change the style slightly um, but I try not to make the same hat twice but if you're doing it for wholesale then you have to so when you're doing it for wholesale then you can say well, you can have this one in three different colourways um, or four or five but don't make it too complicated for yourself Collection size, I normally do about 15, but they say about 15 to 30, so you might want to do about 30 pieces. Um, some designers, if they're doing a lot of wholesale, then they're going to be making up to um, 40, 50, 60, even 70. But this is too much, especially if you're starting out. Keep it down to either 10 or 15. I try to keep it to 10 and it runs over to 15, and I think, well, I might as well photograph those and then I can pick the best ones. Um, collections twice a year again so we do summer collection we do winter collection you might want to do four seasons and just add in those because if you're doing for wholesale they might want top-ups so you can do um, you know your, your spring as well and your autumn um, but if you don't want to be you don't want to do too much then so just do two collections a year so set, fashion week is coming in in September and they're going to be showing their summer 19 things so you want to be getting ready and finished for that uh, winter then comes in February, so we're going to be looking at winter February for the following year. So get your collect stuff ready for that. Um, and think about your budget. So if, when you're designing your collection, try and have a budget in mind so you're not going crazy and going over the top with everything. Um, and, and, you know, order in all the old sort of feathers and things early. Um, you might want to spray them and do different things to them. So try and have a little um, idea in your head exactly well, not exactly, but what roughly what you want to do with things. Um, and then that's going to come in. So the next year is going to be a lot of sort of cascading as well. So drips and things. So I'm trying to put that in. And I've done that in the past. So now it's in fashion. So I can bring it back again. Uh, and I can spray things to look as if, um, you know, the sort of the bottom of the feather is really dark and the top is really light. So it's, it's grading up. 
um, and you can have lots of things sort of coming down and if you're doing earrings like this one you could have loads of things cascading down through it so that'd be quite good hi Trudy thanks for coming on okay um, and so you want a mix as well um, so when you're thinking about your prices and things like that then you want to um, you don't want to just what I mean is you don't want to just make if you're doing hats you don't want to just make all massive pieces because then can the shops buy all of those can your clients afford all of your big pieces so try and think in threes um, sometimes even in fours but if you can have your small collection which is maybe headbands small pieces or if you're doing something else just just your cheaper product and then your middle range and then your higher range your more couture range and then that's going to be more expensive um, and you want so you want low prices and you want high prices also one idea might be to hi or um, one idea might be to, if you're going to do, say, a headband or a small hat, you know, something which is well, on my side of my head, this piece here, um, and that can be your price at, what, 250 300 or less if you're charging less, and then you can um, make a bigger version of that, really elaborated, a lot more feathers, shooting off and curling round, and then that could be a 500 piece. So then your shop or your client can decide. Also, if you have your really, really extravagant piece on the show and in your image, and your client can come in saying, I love that, but I just can't break the bank on paying that much when you say, well, here you go, you know, your smaller piece that might just work for you, um, which is a mini version of, and then they could go for that. You don't want to push them that way if you, if you think they're going to pay the lot more, obviously, but they've got it there. So pricing, I was just going to talk a little bit about pricing as well. If anybody wants to know about that, we can just do that for, um, you know, the way I work and what I do with my hats. Um, so when you're designing your collection, you want to record everything you do um, and you want to write down all of the hours that you're working. So how long it took you, materials, um, you know, the, the cinema that I'm using, I have to write that down. The cost of everything, outsourcing, if you've got anybody else making anything for you, um, if somebody else may be making your flowers, you might be doing that yourself, you know, you, how long has it taken you to do all of these things and just jot them down. So if you can have that on a sheet and you could have your pattern as well that you've used, maybe if you want to make it again, if you can make a pattern, great, um, and have the samples of fabric as well because sometimes I put three different colours of cinema together and then I need to remember obviously which ones those are um, if your shop suddenly says make me three or four of those you need to try and get it as, as right as possible so um, record everything how long it took materials cost outsourcing pattern um, so you can record the pattern if you want to do that again this way you can understand your costs and how much it will cost to make it again then if you want to work out your wholesale price, if you're going to do that, um, you need to work out your cost of your time. You won't be too mad and saying, you know, £50 an hour or something because it's just going to cost it out. You've got to think about maybe if you're, um, somebody else is making this for you, if you can pay somebody else to make it, how much do you need to pay them per hour to get it done? Um, I was told in the past to always charge at least £15 an hour. You might want to charge £30 an hour. Um, depending on you know your brand, how big you are, um, how expensive the hats are, how, how much you can charge for things. So you know that and you need to work that out. So work out your wholesale price um, by working out that. So you've got the materials, you've got how long it takes, um, you've got your studio cost as well. So maybe you want you want obviously you want to pay for your studio, you want to pay for your electric and your gas if you've got that, um, your computer, your um, you know, going away to shows, um, your post, your paper, all of this stuff needs to be paid for. So I um, heard from a milliner in the past what they did was add on ten to twelve, excuse me, ten to twelve pounds to every product that they're making. So if you work out your time and everything, you can add on ten to twelve pounds for uh, for everything else your cost. But it'd be really good if you can just work that out as well. So work out your yearly costs, break it down, and then add that. Work out how many you might make a year, and then you can add that on. So once you've worked all that out and you've got all your costs and materials and everything, this might come to £100, this might come to £50. So let's just say it costs £50. But this hat has probably taken me, it takes me at least eight hours to put all this together. Um, but my time's probably more expensive because I've got loads of other things to do. So just think, and you as well, so just think about you can't always see making all the time. If I was giving this to somebody else, then I might have to charge £80. 
but also I should hurry up and make this a bit quicker because by the time if I start charging 80 pounds just for my time the whole thing has become really expensive so you want to um, work out but let's just say for instance it's going to be 50 pounds for all your costs then you're going to double this for your minimum so double this and that's going to be your wholesale price because then you need a bit of profit you need to cut um, anything wavering you know any any other costs any hidden costs um, and like I say all your, all your um, posts and everything else that comes in also if you're selling wholesale then they might um, you know that you've got to have a, a bit of a waiver because they might knock you down a little bit and be saying well if I have 30 from you then we do it for this price um, and you need a rock bottom price that you're not going to move from so if you've got your wholesale you sorry your cost price then a price that you can't move from and then a higher price which you really want to sell it at so never go lower than the 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 middle one which is you know you can't go any lower than that because you can start losing money so if you say it's going to be 50 pound for materials then your wholesale price is going to be 100 um, and then we've got that so then shops mark up by 2.5 percent as we know 2.5 um that would then if you were selling it to them for 100 pounds they're going to sell that for 250 pounds um, bigger shops times it by three or four so then you're going to be um they're going to be selling that for 300 to 400 pounds so if you spent all your time making something, it's got to look like it's worth 300 to 400 pounds if you're selling it in a big store. And that's where we get the issue because you know, they're selling it for so much, we're not getting that much, but also they have to pay for all of their costs because their shop might be in a really expensive area. They have to pay for all their stuff and all their lighting and all of this. Um, and also if it goes into sale, then they'll need to bring that down a little bit and they've got to still make their own money. So most shops do it by 2.5, um, bigger shops three to four. So some people, you know, end up selling their hat for £200 and then the shops will sell that for £800, £1,000, more than that, depending um, on how much you're selling it for. Also, if you've got, if you're selling um, your pieces to your um, end clients or you have a shop, then your price should be the same as the wholesale price. Excuse me. Sorry, my phone keeps saying it's dying. <laughs> I better hurry up. Okay. So that's that and then range of prices so um, you could do maybe headbands for 150 pounds and then your highest highest price could be a thousand thousand five hundred depending on what you're making and what you're selling so my rough prices start around 250 um, that's for the lower price and then I'll go up then I'll have sort of a middle price a 650 price and then a higher price um, up to you know 800 or more than that so depending on if you're making it for a client um, you know how big it is what's got into it and all this sort of thing so you need to think about that so maybe 150 to a thousand example um, I do about a four tier price range um, so ladies pay well if you're making something that's a couture piece and it's crown and brim then you're going to be charging a lot more for that or if you're doing a big big sculptural piece you're going to be charging a lot more for that but smaller head pieces maybe 250 um, headbands 150 to 250 depending um, and they say I heard something the other day they say that younger people now are having more head pieces so there's something here or a percha with things coming up and the older ladies are going for the crown and brim piece still um, but most people I find now are going for sculptural head pieces ascot pieces or something which is a nice little pillbox um, with beautiful feathers and sculptures going through it. I like sculptures, I like to, I love ascots, I think it's my favourite time. Um, so any questions? So I hope that helps, it's just a little quick um, tip thing for today, so it can't be too long, don't want to keep you on too long. Hi Amanda! Let's see, I start from the beginning. If you've got any questions put them in. Did you intern or apprentice with anyone? Did you go to design school, St. Martin's? Perhaps I went to Surrey Institute of Art and Design. Um, I wanted to go to St. Martin's, I should have done. I come from the Somerset um, and I was always, I was a little bit, I wanted to come to London, always did, but I just felt that London was a little bit, I heard nasty stories, it was a bit scary. So I thought, well, I'll go to Surrey and then we'll just um, 
going slowly <laughs> but you know it would have been amazing to go to St Martin's but L Surrey is brilliant as well it's a brilliant university so it's, it's, it's changed now but it's Surrey Institute of Art and Design oops just lost it a sec when I was there I um a lady came from Frederick Fox so we had lessons from her um and studied millinery at the end so I ended up doing my final major in millinery instead of in fashion but I studied fashion it was BA honours in fashion um and so that was great meeting her from Frederick Fox then I worked for Stephen Jones, so I worked with him for a while, um, and also worked for Catherine Delaney um, in um, theatre and costume and things like that, in fashion as well, and theatre and costume, not co hat costumes. So that was really good, and it was amazing. Sorry, I keep losing that connection. It's amazing working for Stephen Jones. He is one hell of an amazing milliner, um, and we used to work down in his basement area. I actually worked there when Noel Stewart was there, so I don't know if he's... Um, you'll never see this but uh, I don't know if you remember me but I was there when he was there um, and he was starting out then as well and he's gone to amazing heights um, and there was a few other people as well Hannah um, can't remember the other names of people but there we I worked on the couture section and some people worked on the Miss Jane section which was more things that go into the shops so that was really fun and his his room where he had all of his blocks is just tunnel you know underground it's amazing so many blocks in there um so that's what I did so it was Stephen Jones and Catherine Delaney um and Victoria Ann I did a bit of trimming for Victoria Ann as well because I went back to Somerset and then they sent me things and I made things I practiced that way um I taught a bit in Somerset College of Art and Design when I was down there working for um Victoria Ann and then came back to London again so I set up my business I came from London went back to Somerset set up the business and then came back up to London again to set it up again properly um, yeah, I think that's it, and you said, I'm sorry, uh, sis, you said, you said you like peacocks, <laughs> you don't mean the beautiful peacock, do you, you mean the I refused to go in there when I was younger. Yeah, my spring summer collection. So it's called spring summer. Hi, Hi Trudy. Keep losing connection. Uh, Amanda, sorry I'm late. I watched. Yeah. Hi, Amanda. I missed you. Wonderful. Don't. Uh, I don't make items. Ah, yeah. So I. Uh, I don't make items. I sell vintage wares on Etsy, and I'm finding it tricky to work out the cost. It was a lot and they feel I'm not buyers from London should pay more. Uh, what's the last bit? So, uh, I keep losing connection. Sorry, can you all see me all right? Um, so I sell vintage dress on Etsy, so the costs do vary and I'm finding it tricky to work out the cost. A lot of my customers are buyers from, but that's, yeah, I think that's good. Um, so, yeah, I know how hard it can be. And um, people tend to buy things in job lots, so you want to go to. Those are not the sort of people that you want, if they're going to buy in big. Um, so if you, can you just, I know you probably already have, but you just look at all of the other people on Etsy and see exactly what they're selling it all at. But if it's London buyers, then I think, you know, you can be charging, I don't know how much you charge for for a cut but I think people pay at least five pounds have you done eBay yet as well or is that that no good for it um let me know on that one and I'll have a think about it because I was talking to someone the other day who um she buys her things in auctions and then um she sells them on but I will ask her where she sells them on to um because she's doing all right and I was telling her about you and all of your amazing pieces so really, it's just getting um, some features in magazines again, if you can do that, and then just get um, people to, you know, just getting it talking. Try and get, you can think you can pay for an advert for Etsy to get it onto the front cover, to get onto the front piece of the shop. I'll have a look at your page as well. But if anybody wants any amazing vintage pieces, then go to Zoanne, um, because she has, is it still Sybil's Vintage? So it's, she has some amazing pieces um, and they're beautiful and I need some brooches as well. I need more brooches like this one, which is apparently a tie clip, but I thought I'd turn it into an earring. And Zoe has, has uh, you know, silver teapots 
um, vintage cups, vintage plates, all this beautiful, beautiful stuff. So we'll look into it. Okay, no other questions? If you have any, then just put them into the comments below and I'm gonna have a look at them afterwards. And um, also, if you'd like to know any more about um, designing and pricing your products that you're um, creating and things, then um, let me know below because I'm in the middle of creating something for you guys, which I would like I'd like it to be, if you're interested, I'm only going to make it if you really want it, but it's going to be millinery training, so online millinery training, we have say four modules on that, and then another four or five modules on business, so PR and marketing, um, and um, you know sales and customers, um, sort of uh, producing and creating and stuff. My connection keeps going, so I must go now because it's, you're probably, I'm going, uh, uh, uh. At you. Um, so if you're interested in any more and you want to know um, about the course that I'm creating on millinery and business and online business then please let me know in the comments below and if you just want the business side let me know or if you just want the millinery side let me know because I probably could split them too because some people don't want to know about obviously the millinery side if you're making that um, and then also whenever I interview an expert which I've interviewed two already I'm going to put that into the course as well when we interview more people it'll be into the course and it'll be sort of a lifetime course so whenever we update it and add new things in then you'll be able to see it um, and it'll be about you getting from this point of starting um, your business and then the end not the end point but you know a few weeks later of actually getting it going and getting it up and running and getting the best start that you can on um, you know getting out there and getting noticed so let me know if you're interested in that that'd be brilliant thanks for coming on thanks for watching I will see you again soon and if you have any other questions then put them in the comments below thank you bye